Hello and welcome to Let's Play Police Quest 2, The Vengeance. Who's Vengeance? Well, you're gonna have to wait to find out, but I'm betting it probably isn't Helen Holtz. Police Quest 2 was released in 1988, and technology has moved on since Police Quest 1. Police Quest 1 used Sierra's AGI, or Adventure Game Interpreter Engine, and sported a resolution of 160 by 200 pixels in 16 color EGA and only produced some bleeps via the PC internal speaker. Police Quest 2, on the other hand, uses the first version of the newer SCI engine, which stands for Sierra's Creative Interpreter. It has a higher resolution at 320 by 200 pixels, so that's twice the horizontal resolution, although it's still 16 color EGA. It also comes with support for actual sound hardware, such as the popular AdLib music synthesizer cart, so you get real music instead of just bleeps. It's a well-known fact, however, at least among Sierra fans, that Sierra wrote the music for their games with a specific synthesizer in mind, the Roland MT32. The synthesizer module was much, much better than the AdLib. Unfortunately, the Roland MP32 was very expensive back in the day compared to other PC audio solutions, so very few people had one. Most people therefore got the watered-down AdLib conversion of music, and probably didn't know any better, even though it wasn't anywhere near as good as it could be. It just so happens that I do have a Roland MT32, so I'll be using it for this Let's Play to let you experience the music the way it was meant to sound, in the highest quality possible. And just to make it clear, I'm not using an emulator. This is real, genuine hardware from 1987. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, we can get started. So let's type the magic words. Let's move the mouse out of the way. One year has passed since Detective Sonny Bond successfully brought Jesse Baines, the Deaf Angel, to justice. Baines' world of rampant drugs and open violence, the world he controlled so well, has been silenced. As the memory of this animal slowly fades, the city of Lytton once again lives in the peace and serenity of its past. Officer Sonny Bond has been promoted to the position of Homicide Detective. The day begins with Detective Bonds arriving for another routine work day. Or so it seems. Okay, before we can begin, however, we have to get past the copyright protection. It says, to Detective Bonds, from Captain Hall, subject ID of evidence photo. Please provide the last name of the person pictured in the attached evidence photo for homicide case 186751. Please respond in box below ASAP. This, of course, means that you need the manual to find out who this person is. Since uh, scanners weren't all that common back then, it wasn't that easy for people to copy the manual. Not as easy as it was to copy the game discs anyway, so putting information in the manual was a good way to uh, try to prevent uh, piracy. Well, I say good way, it didn't actually work that well. Anyway, um, 
and it just so happens I don't even need uh, the manual for this particular picture because I know who this is. This is Jesse Baines. Yes, the guy we arrested at the end of the the last game. There's actually a whole, uh, whole bunch of uh, pictures it can show you here. Most of whom our names were never heard before. Uh, some of them are familiar though. Baines is one of them, of course. Toselli is also in there. Um, that's uh, Marvin Hoffman from the last game. And as is uh, Victor Sims and Donald Colby. Well, anyway, this is Baines. So, there we go. Having answered that correctly, we actually get to start. And as the introduction said, Sonny Bonds is arriving for a routine workday. Or so it seems. So yes, we're still playing as Sonny Bonds, who it seems uh, has kept his hair blonde. At the end of the last game he uh, had to dye it when going undercover, and now it's still blonde. So apparently he liked it or something. Maybe Marie liked it. So as we'll find out, uh, he's actually seeing Marie at the moment. Maybe uh, we can find something out. Don't be so vain! Okay. No. <laughs> the game won't comment on the fact that Sonny's still blonde. Oh well, anyway. Well, uh, we'd better get to work before uh, the captain gets angry or something. So, we need our keys here. You take the keys from the ignition. And that's the sound this game makes when you get a point. We're gonna hear that a lot, so better get used to it. Most Sierra games, at least uh, the newer ones, have uh, a point sound. And usually it's a very subtle pling or something like that. Not in this case, though. In this case you get an entire fanfare. fanfare. Uh, let's look at this car, actually, because didn't we have a Corvette in the, uh, in the previous game? You're behind the wheel of your personal car. Marie talked you into trading your sports car for this sensible compact model. <sighs> Women. Oh well. Is there anything in the glove box? If you know Police Quest games, you always have to check the, pl the glove box. Looks like there are two things in there. In the glove compartment you see car registration your LPD business card. Now well, let's get the business card. Take a look at it as well. It says LPD, Sonny Bonds, detective. And let's check the registration just to make sure that we didn't steal this car, because that would be bad considering that uh, we're a police officer. This is the vehicle's registration. Careful examination reveals that this car belongs to Sonny Bonds. Why? That's you! The registration should stay in the car, so you return it to the glove box. Okay, okay. Let's get out of the car. You can clearly see that the higher uh, horizontal resolution makes the graphics look a lot more detailed than they did in the previous game, although it is of course still uh, hopelessly uh, primitive compared to modern standards. But hey, this was 1988. Uh, we were happy with what we had back then. Looks like we're outside of the police office. The parking lot has been freshly paved and painted. actually want to look at the police office. Police station. There we go. You're in the parking lot of Lytton's newly remodeled police station. This is a detective's ent entrance. Interesting thing is if you played the uh, remake of Police Quest 1 rather than the original, which I did, then it appears that they remodeled the police station to become a lot smaller. Um, let's look at these cars. 
parked in the lot are unmarked cars, private cars, and sometimes a marked police cruiser. The flag is fluttering in the breeze. You pause briefly to gaze at the US flag flying overhead. Okay, that's enough uh, mucking about in the parking lot. We'll go inside in the next video.